Well, how did you find out about FMT or fecal transplants? Well, I first discovered um, and heard about them when I read an article in Slate.com uh, titled, The Enema of My Enemy is My Friend. Of course, I saw the headline and I was like, what the heck is this about, right? <laughs> So naturally, I just had to see what it was about, and it turns out they were talking about fecal transplants being used for infectious diarrhea caused by Clostridium difficile bacteria, which is also known as uh, C. diff. Now, this illness actually kills an estimated 14,000 people, it killed 14,000 people last year in the United States, uh, unfortunately including the father of a close friend of mine back in March. So since this bacteria could become resistant to antibiotics, fecal transplants, it turns out, were the only way to effectively treat this illness so it would never come back again. Uh, this is because antibiotics kill off the bad bacteria in your gut here, along with the good bacteria, and this leaves the body defenseless uh, for any future bacterial infections. Uh, however, once the new uh, bacteria that you've introduced has become established, it helps prevent the bad bacteria, the C. diff bacteria, from coming back and taking over. But this was not for ulcerative colitis. It was for C. diff-related colitis? Right, right. And so with my surgery date rapidly approaching uh, through my entire large intestine and rectum, I still thought I was out of other options and that fecal transplants wouldn't work for me. Until just a few days before my surgery date when my mom handed me a printout of the Wikipedia entry for ulcerative colitis. Uh, the article referenced uh, an article by Dr. Uh, Thomas Barodi in Australia that had been published in the American Journal of Gastroenterology. Uh, the article documented six cases of ulcerative colitis that had been effectively treated using fecal transplants. So I was floored. This was my smoking gun. It's my cure. So I read the article. I stayed up all night reading up on all of this as much as I could and comparing this to having surgery. And Brody's article, which documented these six patients who were essentially cured, some of have now gone 13 years without any symptoms, just completely blew my mind. And it convinced me. As I saw it, I really had nothing to lose at this point other than my colon and a significant blow to my quality of life. So I then researched possible risk and realized that by taking basic precautions, the worst that could probably happen to me was that I would be right back where I already was, facing surgery.